Howdy. This video is on Ekman constants important to acid-base chemistry. Ekman constants enable us to determine the concentrations of products and reactants at equilibrium. Ekman constants also enable us to determine which is the stronger acid, which is the stronger base. And so Ekman constants are fairly important. Now after watching this video, you should be able to write down the reactions corresponding to a particular Ka, Kb, Ksp, 1 over Ka, 1 over Kb, 1 over Ksp. For instance, if you're asked, what is the reaction corresponding to the Ka of HF, you should be able to write down HF going to hydrogen ions plus fluoride ions. I want you to be able to determine if the Ekman constant for a reaction is a Ka, Kb, Ksp, 1 over Ka, 1 over Kb, 1 over Ksp. So for instance, if you see a reaction, say hydrogen ions plus fluoride ions going to HF, you should be able to recognize that the Ekman constant for that is 1 over the Ka of HF. I want you to be able to do Ekman problems where you have to determine the Ekman constant is a Ka, Kb, etc. and find the value in a table. And so the Ka is the acid disassociation constant. You have the acid as a reactant, hydrogen ion as a product. And so often when you're trying to recognize the type of Ekman constant, you're looking for the hydrogen ion, hydronium ion, or hydroxide ion. And so again, for Ka, the hydrogen ion is written as a product. Now also please remember the hydrogen ion and hydronium ion are the same thing. They're both simplifications. You know, if you have hydrogen ion in water, it's actually surrounded by four to six water molecules. And so we kind of simplify it by writing the hydrogen ion. And so here we have nitric acid going to hydrogen ions plus nitrate ions. Here we have water plus nitric acid going to hydronium ions and nitrate ions. Now these two are the same. In an economic expression, your liquids don't appear. And so if you look at the Ekman expression, you have hydrogen ions over nitrate, um, hydrogen ions times nitrate over HNO3, hydronium ions times nitrate over HNO3, hydronium ions, hydrogen ions, exactly the same thing. And so these two reactions are exactly the same. And the Ekman constant is just the Ka. Again, please remember hydrogen ions, hydronium ions, the same thing. Now here's a table of Ka's. All these are weak acids. For strong acids, we consider the Ka's basically infinite, very, very large. Here, the largest Ka is 0.17, and so that's still pretty small. And the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. And so while all these acids are weak acids, the strongest one on the table is the one on top here. The weakest one on this table is the hydrogen cyanide down at the bottom. And so it's kind of cool. The Ka can tell you the strength of the acid. A Kb is a base disassociation constant. And so for a Ka, you have hydrogen ion or hydronium ion as product. For a Kb, you have hydroxide ion as product. And then you have the base written as a reactant. Now for a weak base, like ammonia, and you should think about ammonia as your typical weak base, you notice it doesn't contain any, any hydroxide. What happens is water reacts with the ammonium ion, I'm sorry, ammonia, and the nitrogen has this lone pair, rips off the hydrogen ion, forming the ammonium ion, and that's how the hydroxide's formed. And so the weak bases that we'll talk about in this course are all similar to um, ammonia having that nitrogen with a lone pair. And so we can write down the Kb for a reaction as straightforward as the ammonium sodium hydroxide going to sodium ions plus hydroxide ions. Also, we can write as water plus ammonia going to hydroxide plus the ammonium ions. And so both for both these reactions, the Ekman constant is going to be a Kb. Now, this sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so it has a very large Kb. Um, ammonia is a weak base, and so it has a small Kb. And so in this table, all the bases are weak. Um, and again, the bigger the Kb, the more, the stronger the base. And so this one's going to be a fairly strong base, the strongest on this table. Ammonia is right in the middle, 1.8 times 10 minus 5. And this one's going to be the weakest base. And so again, it's kind of cool for the Ka and Kb. The bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid. The bigger the Kb, the stronger the base. Probably the most important equilibrium for aqueous acid-based chemistry is the autoionization of water. And so you have water going to hydrogen ions plus hydroxide ions. You write down the Ekman expression, we have products over reactants. Pure solids, pure liquids have activities of one and so no, don't appear. Coefficients become exponents. Um, and so no matter what else you have in solution, as long as aqueous solution, this equilibrium has to be followed. 
Now, because you know we have this, if we know the hydrogen ions, we can always determine the hydroxide ion concentration. If we know the hydroxide ion concentration, we can always know the hydrogen ion concentration. And so a question you might see in the near future is, if in an aqueous solution at 25 degrees Celsius, the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to minus six, what is the hydroxide ion concentration? Well, all we have to do is we have to take this equation we solve for the hydroxide, and so we get hydroxide ion concentration equals Kw over the hydrogen concentration. At 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is 10 minus 14. 10 minus 14 divided by 10 minus 6 gives us the 10 minus 8. And so again, no matter what else is in solution, if it's an aqueous solution, if we know the hydrogen concentration, we can always determine the hydroxide. If we know the hydroxide, we can always determine the hydrogen concentration. Now we also talked about solubility products before. Now remember, solubility product is an equilibrium constant, KSP, where you have a ionic solid going to aqueous ions. Solubility is different. Solubility is the amount of stuff that can dissolve, dissolve in a given amount of liquid. And so you should be able to recognize and write down the reactions for KSP, KA, KB, KW, 1 over KSP, 1 over KA, 1 over KB, 1 over KW. Remember, if you flipped write the products as reactants, reactants as products, then you have to take the inverse of the equilibrium constant. And so for the top reaction here, you know, so that we got the hydrogen ion as a product, and so we should be thinking Ka. We look on the other side, and we see here's our acid. So acid going to hydrogen ions plus an anion. The second concept here is the Ka of HCN. Now if we take these products, write them as reactants, the reactants as products, you notice that the new Ekman constant is 1 over the old Ekman constant. Also notice that here we have hydrogen ion written as a reactant, and so we should be thinking as 1 over Ka. So if you swap products and reactants, you have to take the inverse of the Ekman constant. And so the Ka of HCN is 6.2 times 10 minus 10th. Now, the 1 over Ka is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the 9th. Now that makes sense. You know, if we look at this top reaction, Ekman constant is really, really small, which means that the reactants are more stable than the products. So the HCN is more stable than the hydrons and, and the cyanide ions. Now if we look at this bottom reaction, Ekman constant is huge, so that means the products are more stable. And so again, we see the HCN is more stable than the hydrogen ions and the cyanide ions. But again, when you're trying to recognize what is the Ekman constant, look for the hydrogen ions, hydronium ions, or hydroxide ions. Here, if we look at this one, you know, we have hydroxide ion written as a product. Look on the other side, there's our base. And so the Ekman constant for this one is going to be a Kb. Remember, the pure liquid doesn't appear. Anything with an L or S does not appear in the Ekman expression. If we take the products, we're as reactants, reactants as products. Um, now we're going to have the Ekman constants 1 over Kb. And so again, notice that the hydroxide now is written as a reactant. Now the Kb is pretty small, and so that means the reactant is more stable. If we look at the bottom reaction, our 1 over Kb is really large. And so again, this thing is more stable than that thing. And so this one's going to be product favored. The top one is reactant favored. And so often when we're trying to identify the Ekman constant, we have to look for the hydrogen ions, hydronium ions, or hydroxide ions. And so a question you could see in the very near future is what is the Ekman constant for the following? And what is its value? And so here comes the recognition part. You know, we have the hydrogen ion here, and it's written as a product, and so we're thinking Ka. Here's our acid on the other side, and so it's going to be the Ka of HCl. Now HCl is a strong acid, it's on the list of strong acids, and so the Ka of HCl should be very, very large. Now again, we could also write it with water and hydronium ion. This is exactly the same. But when you're trying to identify um, what is the eclipse constant, often you're looking for the hydrogen ion or hydronium ion or hydroxide ion. And so what is the Ekman constant for this? And what is its value? And so we see we have hydrogen ion as a reactant. And so we might think about 1 over Ka. Notice we also have hydroxide ion as a reactant. But then we should recognize that we have water going to hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. And so this is going to be a 1 over Kw, 
right? It's the autoionization reaction written backwards. And so Kw is 10 minus 14th, 1 over Kw is going to be 10 to the 14th. Now again, it's important to think about stability. And so the Kw of this is 10 to the 14th, or sorry, the um, Ekman constant versus is 10 to the 14th, which means this is a lot more stable than that. And if you have a glass of water, you have very little hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion, you have like 10 to minus 7th molar concentration. And so this stuff is not really that stable. If we look at this one, okay, we don't have any hydrogen ion, we don't have any hydroxide ion, but again, remember, hydronium ion is the same thing as hydrogen ion. And so we have a hydronium ion written as a reactant. We look on the other side, and there's our nitric acid. And so this must be a 1 over Ka for our nitric acid. Now, nitric acid is a strong acid, and so the Ka is going to be very large, and so 1 over Ka is very small. And so again, we're looking typically for the hydrogen ion, hydroxide ion, or hydronium ion, we're going to try and identify what is the Ekman constant. And so here's another one. And so I see a hydroxide ion written as a reactant. Look down this side, there's the base. And so for KBs, hydroxide should be a product. Here it's a reactant. And so this must be a 1 over KB of ammonia. Now ammonia is our typical weak base. And for weak bases, KB is pretty small. And so 1 over Kb is actually going to be pretty large. And so that can cost for this one is going to be greater than 1. And so it's going to be product favored. But again, often you're just looking for hydroxide ion, hydrogen ion, or hydronium ion when trying to determine what is the Ekman constant for a reaction. Now the Ekman constants often have little numbers by them. And so if you know if down here we have a Ka1, Ka2, Ka3. And so those are all acid disassociation constants. Now Ka1, that one means the first hydrogen ion is removed. The two means the second one is removed. And the three means the third one is removed. And so for phosphoric acid, it's a weak acid, but it's got three acidic hydrogens. And so those come off one at a time. And so say you have phosphoric acid in a beaker, and you add some hydroxide, what's going to happen is all the phosphoric acid molecules will lose one of the hydrogen ions. And if you add some more hydroxide, then they'll all lose a second one. And if you add more hydroxide ion, then they'll all lose the third. So it comes out in um, steps. It's always easiest to remove the first one and harder to remove subsequent ones. And so that's why the Ka1 is always larger than Ka2, which is always larger than Ka3. But again, please remember that one means the first hydrogen ion is removed, two means the second hydrogen ion is removed, and three means the third hydrogen ion is removed. And so here's a, a table with some acids and the Ka1, Ka2, Ka3. And again, Ka1 is always greater than Ka2 of the same acid, which is always greater than Ka3 of the same acid. It's always easiest to rip off that first hydrogen ion, and subsequent ones are always harder. So if you look at the phosphoric acid, you know, to remove that first one, you have 6.9 times 10 to minus 3. The second one is 6.2 times 10 to minus 8, and the third one is 4.8 times 10 to minus 13th. And so for this top reaction, Ekman constants Ka1, we're removing that first hydrogen ion. So we're going from H3PO4 to H2PO4 minus. Now, if we take the H2PO4 minus and we put it here, now if we remove the second hydrogen, right? So we've already removed the first one. Now in this reaction, the second one is being removed. And the Ekman constant for this one is going to be a Ka2. Now we have hydrogen phosphate. Now, we've already removed the first two. Now, we got one more hydrogen that we can remove. And so that come constant for this one is the Ka3. And so Ka1 is removing the first hydrogen. Ka2 is removing the second hydrogen. And Ka3 is removing the third hydrogen ion. And again, Ka1 is always larger than Ka2, which is always larger than Ka3. An interesting question we could ask is, what is the come constant for this reaction? And so if we look at the reaction, we start with three acidic hydrogens, and we're removing two of them, and we're leaving that. And so you can imagine that happens, happens in steps. We remove the first, and then remove the second. And so if we add the two reactions here, this one 
and that one will get that reaction. And so you should remember that if you multiply a reaction times a number, you have to take it in constant that power. If you swap products reactants, you take the inverse. If you add two reactions, then you have to multiply the corresponding Eckermann constants. And so again, if you add this reaction with this reaction, you'll get that reaction. And when you add reactions, you multiply the Eckermann constants. So 6.9 times 10 minus 3 times 6.2 times 10 minus 8 equals 4.3 times 10 minus 10th. And so this is the Eckermann constant for that reaction. And so please make sure that you're able to determine if that can cost of reactions in Ka, Kb, Ksp, 1 over Ka, 1 over Kb, 1 over Ksp, Kw, or 1 over Kw. You should be able to also write down those reactions. Eckham constants are important because they enable us to calculate the concentration at equilibrium and also because, you know, the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid, the larger the Kb, the stronger the base. I hope that was helpful.